majestic ambitions. He was getting pictures of the Roman Colosseum. The stadium at Pompeii. A relentless coach. I think he might have had blinders on. It became his obsession. And an uphill battle. It's an absolute disaster. From ancient design to cutting edge technologies. This is extremely modern equipment. How they built the largest stadium in the world. It is the best place to watch football in America. Michigan Stadium, the big house. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. College football is as American as it gets. Every Saturday, rabid fans paint their faces and crowd into those massive stadiums. There are cheerleaders, there are marching bands, and there are piles of money at stake, too. The 1920s after World War I was an incredibly prosperous decade. In the early 20th century, universities began to see that a winning football team was not just good for morale, it was good for business. More revenue leads to better recruiting. Better recruiting leads to more fans, and more fans lead to more revenue. That realization sparked a high-stakes race for bigger crowds and bigger profits. In that game, the stadium with the most seats wins. One school after another started looking at building larger facilities. Harvard got the ball rolling with a 22,000-seat U-shaped stadium. Harvard is the first big stadium, and that kicked off everybody else wanting one of these, too. Harvard's Ivy League rival wasn't about to punt. Its new 60,000-seat Yale Bowl was the first bowl-shaped stadium in the U.S. Yale builds this beautiful oval, and it is the biggest stadium in the country. Ohio State borrowed from both designs to build its famous Horseshoe Stadium. Ohio State had built a brand new stadium, now the largest stadium in the country. The overhanging upper deck allowed the Buckeyes to take the lead with 66,000 seats, and the arms race didn't let up. One school after another started looking at building larger facilities. Michigan State, Minnesota, and Illinois all put up brand new stadiums. Michigan versus Michigan State at Ann Arbor. The play that puts the game on ice. Michigan 19, Michigan State 7. All these enormous new stadiums had one thing in common. When they opened, the Michigan Wolverines were at the top of the guest list. Michigan was the biggest thing in the country, so Michigan was the biggest draw. So if you need to open one of these new stadiums, who do you invite for your dedication game to make sure you're going to fill that thing to the brim? Michigan. By the mid-20s, the epicenter of the college football world was clearly Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Big Ten is by far the biggest conference in the country, and everybody measures themselves against Michigan. National sports heroes become these, like, household names, and two of those household names are Benny Friedman and Benny Oosterbahn, and certainly everyone knows their coach, Fielding Yost. Fielding Yost was more than a football coach. He was an innovator on and off the field. Michigan was at the top of the football hierarchy, mainly because of Yost's incredible success. When he arrived here, he won four out of five Big Ten championships, and he was already an American football legend. The way that he interacted with people was completely the opposite of what you imagine a coach in football is today, where they're yelling at you and trying to break you down. He really believed that if you believed in people and gave them the opportunity, they are going to give you more. And it made his teams fantastically successful. Under hurry up Yost's command, Michigan football became the hottest ticket in college sports. But at their home stadium, demand for tickets far outweighed the supply of seats. We had Ferry Field down here, which was 45,000 people. He had that place packed to the rafters for every home game. The degree to which this place was getting overcrowded, it, it can't be overstated. It's a crisis every single Saturday, especially when you have a big game. You have fans who didn't get into the game. Yost felt that Ann Arbor and the University of Michigan deserved a better facility. Yost hired the Osborne engineering firm to build him a new stadium. 
Osborne Engineering had already developed a reputation by that time of stadium building. They built Yankee Stadium, they built Comiskey Park in Chicago, they had built the football stadiums at West Point and at West Virginia. But what really impressed Yos was the work they did at Minnesota. He saw that stadium, he was very impressed with it, and I think that was what inspired him to contact Bernard Green. Bernard Green had a vested interest in making Michigan the school to beat. He is not just a U of M alum, and he is not just a stadium builder. Bernard Green is the stadium builder, and he is a huge Michigan alum. But Green was an engineer, not a designer. Coach Yost would call that play himself. When he became the athletic director, he starts keeping this folder. He maybe had 40 or 50 different stadium blueprints that he'd collected. When you get halfway through that notebook, you come across a stadium at Pompeii, which is the oldest amphitheater in the world went up about 70 BC. It only seats 25,000, but some of the seats are built into the side of a hill. And then it has this wonderful ramp and tunnel that goes on to the floor of the stadium. Yost was impressed by the classical elements of other ancient stadiums too. None more than the Roman Colosseum. History's most famous sports arena was an elliptical amphitheater with access to the field through a single central tunnel. Stone pillars supported three levels totaling about 50,000 seats. But if Yost wanted to beat Ohio State's 66,000, he had to do better. This was his pet project, and eventually it became his obsession. Fortunately, Yost had access to something the Emperor Vespasian didn't, Portland cement. Invented in 1824 in England and named after its resemblance to limestone on the Isle of Portland. So one of the main things that happens in this time, we really figure out how to use Portland cement and rebar. And in the early 1900s, you get the first cement stadiums. Because of its incredible strength, Portland cement allowed builders to design much larger structures. The cement structure, to them, that was like super modern. That was like, I can't believe we can build out of this material, that we can just create rock out of nothing. But a bigger stadium is not necessarily better. And Yost had some very specific demands. One thing that I think stood out more than anything in the design of Michigan Stadium is that Yost wanted every fan in the building to be able to see every other fan. Waiting to build a mega stadium had its perks. Yost got to see what worked and what didn't. If you look at the Yale Bowl, which was everybody's premier stadium for many years, it was a bowl. And what Yost didn't like about that was the elliptical nature of the stadium pushed the crowd away from the field. So he wanted a stadium that was a rectangle. If you look at the stadiums that Ohio State and Minnesota put up, they all had tracks around the field. The track around the field pushed the crowd away from the field. Yost wanted a stadium where the seats were right on top of the field. And lastly, he wanted a field where when a person walked into the stadium, the whole thing sort of burst upon a person all at once. He'd seen Ohio State, he'd seen Illinois, they both had upper decks, so they both had obstructed seats in the lower deck. Yost wanted to keep away from that if he could. So Yost decided on a columnless rectangular design with no track, but to complete his vision, he needed the perfect site to build it. The students at Michigan used to have this little farm off campus that they would go and you could sit on this gentle slope and have an event there. Miller's farm was a six acre plot near campus. Its gentle slope was just what Yost was looking for. Instead of building up like the Colosseum, he decided to build into the hill like the ancient arena at Pompeii. He'd seen the superstructures at Ohio State and at Illinois, the Yale Bowl, and all those things cost a lot of money. On the other hand, if you dig a hole and put the seats on the side, not only is it a very safe stadium, but it's also cost effective. The university purchased Miller Farm for just over $200,000. Yost would carve his stadium into the hill. Three sides would sit below grade. The entrances would be at the top where a concrete concourse would ring the entire stadium. Yost would pay tribute to the Roman Colosseum with a central player's tunnel, sweeping promenades, and a Romanesque facade. But the imperial design would cost an emperor's ransom. He didn't want students to have to pay for anything. So how is he gonna do this? So he comes up with this crazy scheme and it works. 